What's going on, family? This is a special episode of Beyond the Ball, and this is why, right? I had the opportunity to interview Classy James, and she is the founder of Shakeout Incorporated. And one really dope thing that they do is they help prepare athletes for their next stage and for their next phase of life following their sport. So I had the opportunity to sit down and interview her during the Athletes Unite conference, and we entitled it A Conversation with Classy. But the thing that makes this really special is that now coming up in the next month or two, right? Actually, it's going to be in August. Classy and Shakeout will be holding another Athletes Unite conference, the Athletes Unite conference 2023. Okay, so check out the interview, tap in and be sure to follow Classy as well as Shakeout Inc. So you can be uh, in the know with the events as they come up and finding out how you can be a part. All right, cool. Let's get into the episode. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. So I appreciate those of you that stayed to the end. I know whenever you go to an event, you're really exhausted. So I want to thank you guys for staying and having a conversation with, with Classy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so let's, let's dive in because I'm not sure if everybody even really knows the, like, the story behind ShakeOut. Mm -hmm. Like the name, mm -hmm. where, where, did, where did this come from? Talk, talk a little bit about that. So the name came from something that my dad instilled in me when I was really young. I played all sports because I had slash have too much energy and I would get on my parents' nerve. So they put me in everything, like every, down to like I was a cheerleader for a year. I wanted to play football because my dad was a football coach, but he wouldn't let me play football, so he made me be a cheerleader <laughs> instead. So I've done every single sport, but as I got older and was playing certain sports, some of my friends weren't playing anymore, and I would be really sad because as a kid, you have your best friend on the team that you're playing on, and then the next season, you don't have that friend anymore. And so my dad was like, that was the shakeout. And he was always using big words when I was real young, and your earpiece about to come off. Um, when I was like real young and it wasn't until I got, I think around middle school, I looked it up and essentially shake out is turnover. And now that I'm in corporate America, we realize, and one of the things that we study a lot is turnover and churn, people that are leaving the organization or leaving the industry for whatever reason. And so what my dad was telling me is that as you get older, the shakeout happens. Athletes stop playing whatever sport they're playing, either because of lack of interest when you're a kid. If you're playing all sports, mm -hmm. you can't continuously play all sports. So you find the sport that you love, or as we got older, it was probably skill set capability. We maybe weren't good enough to make it to that next level, injury, or just life. Mm -hmm. Each of us as athletes are either going to go through the shakeout, have went through the shakeout, or in the process of going through the shakeout, which essentially is life after sports. I love it. I love it. I love it. And it makes so it makes so much sense because it's so relevant. We see, we see, you know, things dwindling down and careers and relationships and everything like that. So yeah, thank, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the burning question, what's next, right? We, we, have the, we have the Athletes Unite Conference here and you know, we you know, get, get to see some student athletes here, get to see some, some young professionals. So what's, so what's next for Classy James? Um, what's next for me, many of you may not know, but whenever you're going through like a fundraising journey, because I did moderate a fundraising panel yesterday, um, when you're a nonprofit, it's easier to get funding because it becomes, you know, like an in-kind donation or it's just easier. Like a lot of companies in their budget have budget that they can donate to a nonprofit, but I did all of this operating as a nonprofit, but I'm an LLC. Mm -hmm. So that meant when I was talking to companies and trying to get them to, you know, support or invest in this effort, it became how is it more so like a business case versus a donation. So a lesson that I learned is that I'm going to create a ShakeOut Foundation and run my events through the ShakeOut Foundation moving forward. So that way I can actually do more events because I'll have more money um, and I can make a bigger impact. Mm, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I love it. I love it. So through the midst of all of this, through the midst of day to day, because, you know, you, you've climbed the corporate ladder, mm -hmm. right? You said you're about to, about to create a foundation. How do you stay motivated, right? Because we know as, as athletes, as former athletes, we're supposed to, you know, we, we drive towards the goal, we drive towards that goal. But how do you continuously stay motivated? Like what could be something tangible? Like if somebody in here might be through the midst of, like you're talking about the shakeout, mm -hmm. 
Can, can, you, can you give us something in terms of like how you stay motivated and something that somebody else might be able to apply? Yeah, I think I, I really pull from the community that I'm around and I look at it and there's a lot of people that have it way worse than me. And so I initially first, I'm always grateful for the opportunity. I'm grateful to wake up every day. Every day we get to wake up as a blessing. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of the things I was highlighted um, at Cisco this year for Juneteenth and in the interview, they just kind of talked about what it means. And I said, like, I, for the, up until I was 28 years old, I had my great grandmother in my life. She was almost 100 years old. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that my great grandmother could not do because of the color of her skin. And I think that I, that's a motivation for me. I can go to school, I can create a business, I can buy a home, I can buy a car as a young black woman, whereas my great grandmother could not do that. So my motivation is the fact that like, I always say this on Instagram, I am my ancestors wildest dreams. Mm -hmm. They laid out a foundation for me, they created a path for me, and I feel like it's disrespectful to my ancestors to not take advantage of every single day and like live it to the fullest. Yeah, can we give it up for the ancestors? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, wow. So I, I, just, as, just as we talked before, some of you, many of you, might have questions. So we definitely want to create a space to where if you have a question as well, and you want to ask, ask Classy a question yourself, that you know you have that opportunity because that's why you know, Classy and the team put this opportunity together. So as you all are you know, in the crowd, if anybody has questions, now, now, now is a great time. We can, uh, we can move a mic. We, can we move a mic, please? Thank you so much, Morgan. But yeah, if, if, if anybody has a question, we can probably set the mic like right here. So or you we can, can have them start lining up maybe right there if they have mm -hmm, questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that'd be great. Just so um, that like we talked about before, with you all coming to this conference, to this, the, the, coming to the biggest Life After Sports conference of the year, we don't want you to leave with a question. Right, because there's nothing worse than being in the room with somebody who inspires you, somebody you want to learn more about, and then you're like, ah, oh, I wish I asked them, I wish I asked them that. So y'all, let's, let's ask Classy some more questions. I have a question for Classy. Um, she had this vision of creating this conference, and there's so much work that went into building and creating it, and so many struggles that you overcame. So creating the vision, how did you stick to that execution every single day despite all the adversities that you faced? I think initially to your point, it was the vision, but it also was the, the community that kept me going. And you're part of that community. Like I remember Penelope hosted a retreat at her house, like was it like two or three years ago? And then Amanda, who's asking you a question next, was there. And when I first had the idea, I came to them in a safe place asking for you all's feedback and you guys kept me going. So I think that initially I had an idea, I trusted myself and I'm a very like spiritual person, whatever but anybody believes in that's great, I believe in God. And so when I believe that God gave me this vision and he also put the right people in my life to help me act on this vision. And when I doubted myself, I reached out to my friends and my family and they poured into me. And then I'm a super type A perfectionist, which is like a blessing and a curse. So I, I, I planned everything down to a T. And again, I just kept pushing through. And again, like I, I called my mom probably every day probably either happy or, or crying. And she was like, I don't know what version of Classy I'm getting today. But she was always really supportive. And I remember even calling my dad and telling him how I was stressed out. He's like, you just sit down and watch some cartoons. So people that are just making sure that I'm okay. And then Dom, she's been running around here like a, like a crazy person. And she was one of the, the first people where when I was super overwhelmed, she was like, I'm actually worried about you and your mental health. So when you have people around you that check you, we need to be checked in a respectful way and they prioritize my mental and my physical health, um, that also kept me going, right? And then um, I know we had a men and mental health panel here. We had the mental health professionals over there. I get therapy as well. So it's a, like a collection of self-care and then surrounding myself with the right people that kind of pushed me through, even through days when I just really wanted to quit. Thank you, and I mean, she did an amazing job, her and the team. Let's give her a round of applause. I'm gonna pass mine to Gabby after Amanda. 
just in terms of how much you have going on constantly, what would you say are some of the characteristics that you've had to tap into, either as an athlete or even or otherwise, to kind of keep juggling all these balls in the air and like decide, especially on a day-to-day -day basis, how to manage your time and how to focus on certain things and devote enough time to what need to get done immediately? Um, I'm first super competitive, super, super competitive. And I don't take losses very well if you ever like watched me play basketball um, my parents did Dom was my teammate I went to high school with with Mel um, they saw how fiery and competitive that I was so even like when I was like stressed or anything like that fire in me kept going so I tapped into the competitive side and then I also tapped into my ability to just adapt like as a basketball player I always had to adapt so when planning this conference, I went through a pandemic. I went through a lot of loss. And then I also went through now we're in the middle of a, re a recession. Um, and so everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And then everything went right the way it was supposed to be. So it was definitely the competitive part of me and the ability to be adaptable. And then also, I think, my communication skills um, I was always pretty communicative as a basketball player. I'm just really communicative in my life. Um, I talk way too much. And I was just joking with my dad when I was over there. Um, and I was like, did you ever think that I would actually get paid to talk? And he was like, actually, I, I did. I was hoping because you didn't ever shut up. So those are some of the qualities. I think the last one is not really as much of a basketball player, but just a quality that I possess that really helped me like, get through planning this event. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to get back to the episode in just a second, but I want to let you know, I got to let you know about our upcoming podcast workshop. If you're in the Dallas, Fort Worth area, you want to stay tuned for this. All right, here's why. We have a free podcast workshop where if you're already uh, been podcasting, but haven't made any revenue from your show just yet, this is for you. If you're a speaker, you're an entrepreneur or a small business owner that hasn't even started your podcast, you want to figure out the nuts and bolts on how to get started to position it to where you can make a profit. This is for you. And lastly, if you want to see how you can leverage the podcast to be an authority in your space and see how you can generate leads all from a podcast, this workshop is for you. All right. So don't get overwhelmed trying to buy cameras and all this different equipment that you don't need just yet. Just click the link down below, startyourpodcasthere.com, and sign up for the training. All right, I got to go. I got to get ready. You're welcome. Okay. Um, uh, I have a question. Um, yeah. As a student athlete, I wanted just to kind of ask more about, like, your journey from transitioning out from college and more about, like, your, your lineup of jobs and, like, moving forward and how you got into this position right now. Yeah, so my journey was, I, my career came to an end a year early. Um, I had a career-ending injury as a bone and cartilage transplant in my left knee. I technically have another year of eligibility, but I don't think anybody wants me on their team at this point. And so because I ended a year early, I really had to figure out like life after sports prematurely. That's kind of the, the genesis of me creating this company. So what I did, and I'm gonna probably talk about my parents a lot. They're in the corner over there. Um, <laughs> After I, I had my second knee surgery, after I graduated, and I actually like was on bed rest, I went to my mom, I'm like, well, I can't be a bum, like I need a job. And so, and so um, she had introduced me to a wonderful woman. She works at Cisco Systems for over 22 years, and um, someone just looked over my resume, and it was really terrible. And so she just started to ask me certain questions about just myself, and she actually fell in love with my personality. And she ended up hiring me to work at Cisco. So I did not start working at Cisco the, the standard way. I was a testament that your network is your net worth. My network were the people I lived with at the time, were my biggest advocates, my parents. And so that's actually how I got at Cisco and is a reason why I'm still at Cisco because Cisco took a risk on me when I felt like I wasn't worthy. Um, and so I'm forever grateful, forever grateful for Cisco, but that's also the reason why I created this conference, because I was blessed to be from Silicon Valley, have two parents that are black in tech. I grew up in between the, face, the headquarters of Facebook and Google, like that's crazy. 
Um, and so I wanted to provide an opportunity for other athletes to have the access that I had just growing up with two amazing parents. Oh, Tessa, uh, classy um, question. So, um, you're, so basically you're an entrepreneur and entrepreneur, correct? Mm -hmm. How, um, so I kind of explain that, um, those two dynamics. And then also um, for next year for the event, um, what what do you expect for next year? Yeah, so entrepreneur mean like how I like do kind of like entrepreneurship stuff, but like at Cisco. Yeah. So again, um, I'm really fortunate. And I'm gonna talk about Cisco a lot, and I have a lot of like Cisco employees. Can everyone that works at Cisco stand up? Yeah. So I'm really grateful to work at a company like Cisco where they actually, like I said yesterday, allow me to be my true authentic self. And for the first couple years working at Cisco, I just, I watched and I learned because I was like a rookie. I went from being a basketball player to not having any corporate America experience. So I just was an observer because I believe like a really good leader is first a good follower. So all I did was follow, understand corporate politics as a black woman, which is really, it, it's hard to navigate. And then I started to identify gaps and opportunities, right? Where they would talk about, before even I got into the DEI work, you know, I noticed some of the, the collaboration technologies I work in collaboration right now, how it could be utilized as like for watching film. So I'm sure a lot of you guys watch like Jalen Jacoby when they're always like marking up game film and stuff like on the TV. So we have something called a WebEx board and it allows you to mark up like meetings in real time. And so when that released, I was like, I would actually have loved to have one of these in the locker room um, when I played basketball, and I'm sure a lot of professional sports would like it. Fast forward, I was the first Cisco employee to ever have an NBA player featured in a WebEx marketing campaign where we were highlighting the WebEx board. The NBA player is Spencer Dinwiddie, and that was the first big tech influencer deal that he got, so it was mutually beneficial. And so once I started to do that, I had to fundraise a lot of money to pay his influencer fee. I put together a pitch deck and everything, I was doing all this as a business analyst, but I was working collaboratively with our marketing team. And that was the first time I saw that I can look at something that I thought was an opportunity, bring together sports in my full-time job and actually make something really great happen. And so then I was like, well, how can I then integrate what I do with ShakeOut? Because I love athletes, but I'm also gonna be very honest with you, in this space, it's hard to make money because I, I'm operating like a nonprofit. I'm giving back. I was doing motivational speeches or workshops for free at colleges and universities, and so I couldn't quit Cisco to do that, so I said, how do I make it make sense? So I had a lot of great mentors at Cisco. I would give, you know, I would ask for their feedback. I would make sure that it wasn't a conflict of interest. I do want to preface it. If you do want to have a business and you're working at a company, you have to make sure it's not a conflict of interest. You have to make sure it doesn't breach your contract. So I got all of that kind of squared away and I actually started to make it my mission. Like how do I get more athletes and athletes of color to come work at Cisco? And then I was like, well, how do I broaden it out holistically and have this conference where obviously I have Cisco here because I work here, but how can I talk to other companies as well that see the value in bringing athletes in their organization? And that's how I was able to do all of this. And then my other business, Sip and Slay, I simply made like 2020, the pandemic, I drink a lot of tea. I didn't expect for it to kind of become a brand that it is today. And I'm sure, you know, it'll take off and do what it needs to do. But I just started to make things work with, with my passions. And then, you know, again, I'm blessed to work at a company that sees the value in what I'm doing and they make investments in me. Like as a black woman, when I went and got my MBA, they paid for part of my MBA. I recently just was a part of a historic program in the Harvard Business School for DEI they were able to cover that as well. So they've invested so much in me and therefore I'm able to then bring more individuals to come and work at the organization. So it's essentially, it's like a, it's a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all, can we give it up for Harvard? Can we give it up for Harvard? You got Harvard on a resume. Yeah, we got the Black L. Woods over here. Yeah, you got, you got, the, you got Harvard on the resume. That's, 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 that's a big deal. You know, I just wanted to just bring that up. I told you I was. Yeah. <laughs> talk to us, talk to us. Yeah, so uh, classy. I know a lot of times we a lot of times we hear, uh, you know, these stories about women, you know, 
especially like our black women and, you know, just our community, right? Uh, you know, single parent home, the struggle and, you know, just the, the, the struggle to be successful and, you know, how hard it is growing up. Uh, but then we fast forward, you know, to you and your story, you know, a pit bull on the court. You know, these are things we hear. Uh, you're out in, you know, Cali. I give it up to your parents. Super successful uh, in tech, you know, black in tech. Uh, and can you kind of speak to us about the pressure, if any, for you to, you know, succeed? For you to, you know, kind not 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 follow their footsteps, but you know, you're a direct, you know reflection of, you know, your parents. So one, can you talk about, you know, the pressures, if any, for you to succeed? Uh, and then the second question uh, is kind of loaded, but the second question I have uh, is, well, it's not loaded, uh, but for you to you end sure? your, your, your career, like your, for, for your career to end with the injury, mm -hmm. like realistically, how long did it take for you to like get over that funk and, and realize that like, I'm not gonna play basketball anymore? Um, so to your first question, Diamonds are made under, under pressure, so I'm a diamond. That's my birthstone, so I was made for pressure. But I think, too, like, I was always a perfectionist, and I think my parents can agree, my cousin who's right here can agree. Like, I've always been a super, super perfectionist, so um, that's just, I put more pressure on myself than anybody puts on me. Um, so actually, that's why in therapy, I'm navigating to learn how to give myself grace, how it doesn't have to be perfect all the time. So, but it is now pressure because I'm doing this amazing event and everyone's asking about like, what's, what's year two look like? What is, what does the future look like? And I do have ideas, but those of you that have also been really close to me during this process have seen me break down. Some of y'all like have potentially even heard or seen me cry and I'm not that big of a, a, a crier, at least like publicly to other people. Like I used to just suffer in silence a lot. And so I think that I'm still navigating how to handle like the pressure I put on myself. And so I'm still like a work in progress. So, you know, th that's just like a real honest answer. And then the second one to, I guess, like coming to terms with not playing anymore. Last night I went to the Atlanta Dream Game with some people and my dad, and that was actually really emotional for me. Actually, I was next to you. Um, that was really emotional for me, and there was a moment where me and my dad looked at each other because it had been so long since I felt comfortable enough to be in a stadium and watch people play basketball and not have a basketball in my hand. And I stopped playing in 2014, it's 2022. Um, and so it's still a journey. When people ask me, like, who's your favorite basketball team? I don't care because I'm not playing. And that's a real answer. Like, what do you watch on TV? Real Housewives. <laughs> that's what I watch, <laughs> like when I have free time. So it's still hard because I have to still then be, it's like a, sometimes a trigger that I can't play basketball. My knee is real janky. If I go to an adult league, I'm gonna try to fight everybody. And then my knee's messed up, so I might hurt myself again. So like, I just honestly stay away from basketball. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about the adult league and you fighting people. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was real. It was fun. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt <laughs> So I, I, I'm curious to hear just, just a little bit of, because I know we, we've talked, and do you consider yourself an influencer? Uh, I don't like that word. Well, I mean, I'm just, I'm just well, okay, because if we look at the, what, the, the term influencer, if we break it down, right, I, I would say it's somebody who has influence to sway people's decisions. Not why, don't, necessarily why don't we ask the audience to raise their hand if they think I'm an influencer? Okay, by a show of hands, raise your hand if you think Classy is an influencer. Uh, uh, like 50-50. Yeah, about half. Yeah. We might not be able to see some people in the lights. Okay. It, but I, I was just gonna ask, just like just by way of that, like of that title. Mm -hmm. Okay, we won't call you influencer. We won't call. It, but, I, I joke about it all the time with my mom. I'm like, I'm an influencer because brands ask me to post and they like send me products or pay me. So I'm an influencer. But I think like social media, like although it's really good, it's been mm -hmm. like really, it's been really corrupt. Like it's smoke and mirrors, right? Like so that's why I guess I don't like the. But as far as influencing people, influencing a movement, yes, right? Because I'm doing something that's never been done before, and I look the way I look. Like, I'm the age, I'm the, you know, age, I was able to make all this happen for my first year. And yeah, there was, there's a lot of things that I can improve upon, but I do think I'm influencing a movement where we're, you know, connecting people, where we're trying to help people, we're providing opportunities and access to, I think, athletes that they probably never knew that they could do. 
And, you know, I, I think I always say I'm first and foremost a black woman in tech. Mm -hmm. And that is really intimidating to, to people with like, oh my God, you're in tech? Do you know how to code? No. And I don't want to learn how to code. <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of software engineers out there. Um, but the thing is, they don't realize that you can be a communication specialist, you can be a project specialist, a program manager, a marketing specialist. You can, you know, be on the legal team at a tech company, right? There's so many things that you can actually do. You can be in sales. And so I think that when I'm talking about tech, because that's where I, I work in, and honestly, every single company has a technology component. Every single tech company, period, I think, like, has an application, has a website, has an IT team. And so I think the more that we're in this digital age and we realize technology is kind of like one of the leading factors in the era that we live in, I want people to be like comfortable realizing that you can work in tech. And I always say too, there's a lot of money to be made in tech. And I think that some people want to be gatekeepers. I'm the opposite. I talk too much, like I, I'm, I'm quick to share resources. I know when we started connecting, like we probably met, I know, I know you reached out to me like, mm -hmm. you know, a while ago, but we really actually connected a couple months ago and we built this, you know, friendship and stuff. And I'm very just open and transparent. And if I know something, I'm gonna give you what I, what I know, I'm gonna share what I know. Um, but a lot of people aren't like that, they're gatekeepers. And I think hopefully I can influence people to realize that if you operate in a scarcity mindset, like you're gonna block blessings. When you're a blessing to other people, you're gonna be blessed. And so that's the way that I move and I operate. Talk to me about self-care, because I know your level for excellence is like, and then talk, talking with your dad, you know. What he say? <laughs> well, no, we were, just, we, were just having a con we were just having a conversation about excellence, oh. you know, just, just, just talking with him, and he was, he was like, excellence is, excellence is what's expected, right? Mm -hmm. So, so under, understanding that, and I know you said you, you got a little bit of the perfectionism going on. Where's the self-care in that? I know you said that, like the therapy, but in terms of like, if somebody was like, you, you had a stressful day, like, what, what does self-care look like for you, like to relax? And if you're at a 10, 12 on stress, how do we level out Classy James? So my second company, Sip and Slay, like self-care is the cornerstone of that company. And so I actually, when I created that company, that was a way for me to like, practice what I preach, right? So I learned how to make candles and that's super therapeutic and my house always smells so good. Um, so, so that was a form of self-care for me to like drink some tea, light a candle, light some sage, because I don't need no bad energy around me, um, and then just relax. And it actually forces me to do it because I have like candles all over my house, right? I have tea all over my house. And so whenever I'm super stressed, I like look at some type of sip and slay something in my house. And I'm like, sit down and relax. I can also say, and first of all, I love the fact that a lot of these speakers are actually like my friends. So um, me and Melanie Wood, who, who started off today with the meditation and breath work, um, we went to high school together. Her younger sister actually is the graphic designer behind ShakeOut. So can we just clap for Melanie's sister, Courtney? Um, <laughs> I remember it was, I think after my 24th birthday, I had followed Mel. We weren't that close in high school. She was a year older than me, but she was always doing so much like yoga, meditation and stuff. And I used to think yoga was really weird. Um, I'm gonna be honest, like I thought it was, I was like, they're everyone, they're just, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. just, oh, they're just, I feel like they were just so aloof all the time. Like, namaste, everything's good. I'm like, everything's not good. You gotta get things done. Like, what are you doing? Um, but, then, but then I got connected with Mel and she actually told me about how do I breathe through stressful like stages. So if I'm having a really bad moment, I like listen to the breath work that Mel has taught me and I calm myself down. If I don't have the ability to have a candle and tea near me, like even, when we talk about meditation, I look at meditation and prayer like hand in hand. So if I'm really, really stressed out, I'm like, I need a moment. Let me go step to the back a little bit and let me just breathe. Let me pray. Let me talk to God, all my angels, all the ancestors, just give them the strength to not like cuss nobody out right now. Um, and so like self-care looks like differently in different ways, depending on the, the tools and the resources that I have. But I'm also really blessed to have 
people in my life like Mel that have talked to me about the importance of self-care and then how do I then integrate that in my day-to-day life. I love that. I love that. And I really can't see. Was there? Okay, there are some questions. Okay. How you doing, Classy? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. So I understand the importance of having positive, influential parents. So I wanted to know what are some of the greatest teachings or qualities that you took from your parents in order to make you who you are today? Um, I would say that, and I remember this is a story that my, my parents told me when I was younger, when they found out they were having me, my dad said he wanted to like raise me different. He wanted me to feel empowered to speak up for myself, to not take shit from anybody. Um, I feel like sometimes he probably regrets saying that because sometimes I give it back to them. And I'm like, but y'all made me this way, you know? So I think that they instilled certain like characteristics in me to just like always strive for what I want and always look at like the fact of like, no is, is a not right now and also lean into your family. If you guys have come to the, the Shake Out or Sip and Slay um, booths, you see that that's all my family that's running that. So family is first and like don't take anything from anybody because at the end of the day, my family has my back and you don't want to mess with my family. So that, 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 those are things that they definitely, they definitely taught me. You're welcome. So, so just in terms of one, seeing that you know, you've, you, you've been intentional, because I know we've talked, and you said you've been very intentional of like going the route that you've gone and what you've studied, and uh, also going the route in you know, Harvard. You know? So, go, so going, going the route to, to, to do these things to further your development and everything like that, like, I'm curious, what does, at the highest level, like for you, when, when Classy James has achieved this, then you'll be able to look back and be like, like, I'm good. I kind of feel that way today, to be honest with you, because I look at all that I have done. Like, some people may not know, but the initial concept of ShakeOut was going to be a book. And Dom knows that. And then also I had went to my parents, and I was like, I have this great idea. And my mom was like, probably rolled her eyes like, OK, another great idea. Um, and I was like, I want to write a book about being successful after sports. And I had been working for Cisco for like, I think, one or two years. And my dad said, but you're not successful. You just got a job. <laughs> like, shout out to you for getting a job. But I think what also he meant was you have barely touched the surface of the success that you are going to experience as a woman. And he knows that because he raised me, right? And so... And then fast forward four years later since I had the idea of the book and look what, where we're at. So I can kind of just be like, wow, I'm really proud. But also the, the type of person I am, I'm never satisfied. And that's why I played that Kobe Bryant video because I, first of all, that was like one of my favorite basketball players of all time. And you know, we lost him in the middle of me planning this. And so I really had to lock in to like my Mamba mentality and really like do what I have to do. But I'm never satisfied. And I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse because I always feel like there's room, there's always room to improve, to get better. And so when I look at, at the end of the day, when I'll be super actually proud of myself is also when I have a legacy, you know, to pass on what I'm, what I'm doing. Right now, my legacy, I have a nephew, I have little cousins, I, you know, I, I have my little cousins here showing them how important it is as a black woman to do what you want to do, to step out on faith. But the, I think the, the biggest blessing would be to have my own legacy and teach my kids about whatever it is that they want to learn, right? Overcoming obstacles. If they want to be athletes, be athletes. If you want to be an entrepreneur, be an entrepreneur. Because what's the purpose of me getting all these degrees and I'm not going back to school? Like, I'm really good. I don't need, to, I don't need a PhD or anything. Like, I think Harvard was it for me. Um, but it's kind of like, what's the purpose of doing all of this if I then can't pass that on to someone else? I don't want to stop with me. So for me, I think like the next biggest, greatest achievement for me would be to like have like a legacy of my own that I can pass this information, pass the, pass the wealth on to. Most definitely. And is, the, is there a place where the, people can, where the people can get the book or the book is like, where is? What book? You said you was work. I thought you said you was work. 
No, I, oh, it was an idea. Said, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that, he said I'm not okay. successful. I didn't write a book. Like, uh, okay. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I might have one coming uh, in the next five to ten years. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Once, well, I'm, once I'm actually successful, I'm gonna ask him, "Am I successful enough to write a book?" <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> he still don't know. He did the Kanye shrug on me. See. <laughs> oh, dad. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. I, I love it. So, in in, in terms in terms of like, let me let me ask you this, like. Because I always like to see and I always like to hear from like people who are leaders and people who are like making movements and things like that happen. Like what are, how are you further developing yourself? Like is there, is there books out there that, that you would recommend? Like it's been like a really influential book in your life or is there like podcasts that you listen to that, you know, maybe potentially uh, some of us in the audience we can take and say, oh, let me tap in there and let me hear this. And Yeah, I would say... The book that actually inspired ShakeOut, I think it was 20, I want to say it was 2017. I just got into the um, MBA program at Santa Clara, and I actually was out here in Atlanta with um, my cousin, and I was reading the You Are a Badass book by Jen Sincero, How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness, and I, I read it, and you know, she was living in a garage um, and came up with an idea and turned basically like her passion into purpose and started to make a profit. And so that was the first book that I read that I was like, man, if she can do it, she's living in a garage, I could do it because I live in my parents' house. <laughs> and, and so that really inspired me um, to you know, start getting into this. But um, I mean, I, I read a lot of different books. Like The Four Agreements is a great book too. It is. Because you know, I, as a perfection, I tend to take things real personal. So it's a good re reminder of not taking things personal all the time. Um, as far as podcasts, I think I've listened and read to enough personal development stuff. My family will probably agree. Like, they probably want me to, um, my family there, then also, like, my cousins and my aunts will be like, just listen to things for leisure. So, I mean, I was listening to the Earn Your Leisure podcast a lot. That's how I started doing the Airbnbs and started doing all this other stuff, um, which was great. But, but right now, I kind of just listen to things that just kind of calm me down because I feel like I've done a, a Read, read enough personal development books and listened to enough personal development podcasts. But I'll probably make a list of probably like my most influential books and podcasts and then, you know, post that in the, in the uh, app for the conference in case anyone wants to just check out kind of what I used to listen to um, and what I'm, I might listen to time to time. Because, I mean, for fun, I listen to true crime, you know, mm -hmm. podcasts and stuff, like, um, you know, just things that interest me. Fair enough, fair enough. And sh shame, well, somebody about to clap. We can clap. It's okay. We can clap. Can clap. <laughs> but I was going to say, just, just shameless plug, if y'all have not gone into the Socio app, there's an Athletes Unite Conference podcast. So some of the speakers that, uh, that, that you've been able to hear, and, and also uh, Classy and I have some conversations on there, so got the Athletes Unite Conference podcast as well. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to let you all know about that. <laughs> oh, I thought there was something. Was there a question? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we can't really see because the lights are, like, right there. Here, I'll give you the mic. Like I'm watching you here and thinking, these things that you're doing are things that I feel like I could do myself, and it's really inspirational. My question to you is, like, for the people who don't know you as well in here and, like, enjoying hearing about your story and your journey, how can we continue to support your vision and to continue to progress Athletes Unite and all the other entrepreneurships you're doing? Yeah, um, I would say follow the ShakeOut um, Instagram. It's at ShakeOut LLC. You can follow also me on Instagram. And I think just share with, with your community. Um, a lot of people in this room were individuals that I had met at some you know walk of life and they told a friend and told a friend and that's how I was able to get the amazing sponsors and partners here and even the amazing attendees. So I would just say, you know, if you were moved, if you were inspired, tell someone, post about it, um, use our hashtag AUC22. And also just like, feel free to connect with me. I'm, I'm a human, like, you know, I might not be able to get back to you as fast as I usually do over the next couple of weeks because I am going to take some time to myself to just really like reflect and rest. But um, I think pretty much everyone knows me that's in this room that either like has my contact information or on my Instagram. If you message me, I'll message you back. So um, if you have any questions, you can reach out. But if you want to keep supporting ShakeOut, just, you know, keep spreading the, the word and the, and the cause and the mission. 
Hi. I wanted to ask you a little bit about fear and confidence. Um, from the outside looking in, you know, you are such a badass and a huge inspiration. And like, I follow you. I, I met you in 27, what year? 2018, 19? Oh, no, the Women Mastermind is when I first met you. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been following you and supporting you ever since. But something that I know I st struggle with, and um, the, many of the athletes that I work with, I hear this often, um, is just that like, initial step like over the edge to to do what's in your head that you say you want to do but you're afraid to do that for whatever reason that might be how do you battle any self-doubt confidence or fear because for me it looks like you don't have any and you're just like busting through doors but I imagine that there's moments of um you know having that you know insecurity or what ifs in your head so can you speak to that yeah i I'd actually like deal with like a lot of things like by myself. I live by myself too, so I'm always like in my head doubting myself, um, wondering if I'm doing enough. I deal with imposter syndrome all the time. Um, although it might not outwardly look like it, I definitely, definitely deal with it. But I look at like, what's the worst that can happen? Like if I go to someone and I'm like, hey, I'm having this event, like can you contribute financially? They say no, okay, I'm gonna keep it moving. Like there's plenty of people in the world, there's plenty of opportunities out here. Um, I think that a lot of us are afraid of rejection. And I'm, I'm not afraid of rejection, it sucks. I like acknowledge it that, wow, that was unfortunate. You know, that, okay. I, I was even talking to someone yesterday that was basically saying how he like talked to his company to see if they would wanna be involved in the conference and they didn't want to. Um, and I was like, that happens so many times. But the companies that are supposed to be here are here today. So can we clap it up for the sponsors and partners that are here today? Like, seriously. I'm gonna look to the right side. I know my girls at Bet MGM. I had one conversation with them, and after that, they're like, "Yeah, we're sold. Like, we got we got it done like like that because you know they're supposed to be here. Because when I was talking to them, there was something that resonated with them. So I think a lot of us are sometimes afraid of being rejected, and so we limit ourselves because we think someone's gonna say no. And if they say no, keep it moving. Like there are plenty of people that will say yes. And then if, if I'm ever feeling like nervous or scared, like I have people that I can go to and ask their opinions because I care about their opinions. Like I don't care about everybody's opinions. I don't care to be the most well-liked person. I'm not in the Miss Congeniality contest pageant, you know, but you're gonna respect me because I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna treat you with love and respect. Everything I do first and foremost, I do because I care about the work I'm doing. I love people. I wanna see people win. So even if you don't like me, you're gonna be like, okay, she might be a little, aggressive sometimes, but sometimes I have to be. Like I'm a black woman in this world where because of the color of my skin, people might say no. Because of the color of my skin, some people like get shot just because they're black. So, I mean, like I was saying earlier, you know, there are certain things that like my ancestors or my grandmothers or my great grandmothers, even my own mother, like potentially could not have done when they were my age. They had it way worse than I did. So if I'm afraid of someone t telling me no, there are people that, you know, can't do other things, like can't eat. So I, I think I, everything's a perspective for me. Delight, delight. I know, if you guys are like wanting to talk right there, we can't see, we're like blinded by the light. So if you guys wanna at least come to the side, um, otherwise I don't think, you got glasses too, yes. what's your vision? I'm Not 2020 like mine though. <laughs> we, we've seen what 2020 vision did for the world. <laughs> Everybody, oh 2020, this is my year. Oh is it, wow. is it? Shut that down. Okay. Yeah, that was nobody's year. <laughs> what is, what would be something that What's a question that I did not ask you that I should have? So in terms of something I didn't ask, but something that you might just have on your heart that you just want to share with the people, a word, a word from you to the people. Um, this was like the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Like ever. Um, because there was a lot of rejection, a lot of rejection. Those speakers that were a part of it when I first had the idea, and then we went through like a lot of changes with who's a part of the event. We went through just a lot of just things. I went through a lot of personal stuff, a lot of personal stuff. Um, 
my family, we lost so much in 2020. I lost a lot of family members that meant so much to me. Um, I don't want to cry, but I almost lost my dad last year. So he's here today, but last year I remember he was in ICU. And so doing that, still pushing through, like was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. So I'm so grateful to be here today. I'm so grateful for those that have showed up for me because I literally poured my heart and my soul into this event. And I hope it shows. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, because this was super exhausting. I'm really tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess that's one thing I want the people to know. Well, I, I mean, I, I didn't really have anything else. I'm just, you know, I'm just honored. Like, like I told you before, I'm honored for this friendship. Um, I'm honored that now we're family. Yeah. You know, we're yeah. like, like we, we, like we're, we're locked in. And everybody, I, I hope, you know, where, wherever you are in your journey, I, I hope you were able to pull something or extract something from uh, what Classy shared. Because if we really look at it, she said she started with a passion, then she took a problem that she even herself faced, and then she put together a plan, and then we mix all those ingredients up. And then it's purpose in real life. Mm -hmm. So, y'all, one more time. Can we give it up? Yes, let's, give, let's, let's stand up. Let's stand up. Let's oh, stand up. Wow. Let, let, let's give, let, come on. Let's honor her.